that's what's more fun for me. Right? Jason Bateman is the man of the moment. These days, his face has become ever-present in Hollywood comedies. Known for his dry and deadpan comic delivery, he shines as the straight man in a comic duo. Keep watching and discover how Jason kicked off his career as a teen idol in the 80s, then slipped into almost obscurity before making a comeback which sees him hitting the peak of his career. Bateman's acting career began at the age of 10 when he starred in an educational film. This then led to several commercials and TV work. In 1981, the 12-year-old Bateman scored a reoccurring role as James Cooper Inglis on the long-running show Little House on the Prairie. Bateman's popularity continued to rise and he became a heartthrob in big family sitcoms such as Silver Spoons and one of my favourites, Valerie. The 80s were a busy time for Jason, but as he hit his 20s, it all changed. The 90s saw him fall out of the spotlight. He worked on several unsuccessful TV pilots, plus four ill-fated TV sitcoms. He has admitted that he struggled with alcohol and drug use, confessing it was like risky business for 10 years. But with the new millennium, things were looking up. He landed the lead role of Michael Bluth in the quirky TV sitcom Arrested Development. Acclaimed for its eclectic ensemble cast, witty humour and single camera style, the show won Best Comedy Series at the 2004 Emmy Awards. Jason was stoked to have a hit on his hands. Uh, I'm actually happy that, uh, that all the incredible critics that basically kept this show alive uh, have got uh, a little bit of vindication here, um, which is nice. And selfishly, I think we all as a cast and the writers are really, really happy about it because we get to keep doing a job that I think we all agree is probably our, our, our best uh, employment we've had in a long time or ever in my case, Front row uh, so right. it's very good. In between shooting the successful Arrested Development series, Jason found time to get back on the big screen by playing supporting roles in box office comedy hits. Jason made memorable appearances in 2006's Smoke and Aces and The Breakup with good friend Jennifer Aniston and continued to impress in Dodgeball and Starsky and Hutch. Here he learnt some cheeky tips from big names in comedy like Owen Wilson, Ben Stiller, Will Ferrell and Vince Vaughn. I'm actually learning a lot uh, watching uh, Ben and Owen work and, and Vince as well um, and Todd. I mean, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of ease and relaxation on this set. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a breeding ground for comedy over here. Um, just because everybody's so nice and relaxed and, and uh, just adding stuff left and right, you know. Um, it's, uh, it's very educational about uh, how to do it, how to do it well, how to do it nicely, efficiently, with alacrity. You can look that up. And the industry was starting to look Jason up. Offers were rolling in, and instead of searching for roles, scripts were now being written for him. Jason was easily persuaded to take part in Couples Retreat, a comedy film that was co-written by Vince Vaughn and Jon Favreau. They penned a character specifically designed for Bateman, but he found this made his job almost a little too easy. It was incredible that this was written for me. I mean, it would be, it would be something if, if it was written for me and it was some, you know, you know, really great drama, you know, some courtroom thing or whatever, but to have it be written for you and it's a comedy and it's with Vince and John and it's in Bora Bora and they actually name your character your real name. I mean, there's just no real work involved here on my part, you know. He's actually written it to my sensibility, my sense of humor, the way I speak, my whole meter, everything. And um, I'll probably have to refund a bit of my money back to Universal, but I, I'm hoping to kind of make up for that with my performance. And, and when I give them that portion, they'll say, no, no, we've seen the dailies. You're doing a nice job. You go ahead and keep, keep the full check. Jason got the chance to show his more serious side in a standout supporting role in the Oscar-nominated Juno. Jason's clever ability to make miscreant and immoral characters likeable was showcased when his character sleezed onto a pregnant 16-year-old girl 
and he managed to come off as just a slightly sad oldie trying to regain his youth. Playing the tainted but jovial character became a trend for Bateman when he was cast in State of Play. In this thriller, Jason plays a scattered club promoter and although it differed from his usual roles, he pulled it off brilliantly. His drama co-star veterans Russell Crowe, Ben Affleck and Rachel McAdams helped him hone his craft, not to mention his sarcasm. I play a guy named Dominic Foy, who is a, um, a bisexual fetish club promoter with an Oxycontin problem. So, um, I, you know, I, I just sort of, you know, you fall out of bed into a character like that, you know. Not a lot of research, um, not a lot of acting involved there at all. I think I put a, an extra special, you know, hair cocktail in my, in, in my, in my little doo-wop there, and, and that was it, really. Um, the rest came pretty natural. Bateman was growing as an actor and continued to surprise audiences with his diverse film choices. He starred in another drama, Up in the Air, alongside George Clooney, once again proving that he should not be restricted to the comedy shelf. I would describe this film as something that uh, will be completely engaging in that it is 100% relatable to anybody who is a human being. There's, there's a lot of things that go through this that are, um, that will resonate to you both comedically, dramatically. Um, there's, there's, lonely, there's loneliness, there's companionship, there's, there's good news, there's bad news. I mean, it's a very, very human project. 2011 was a massive year for Jason Bateman. In the space of a year, he was able to display his best attributes. First up, he was enticed back into the comedy genre in Simon Pegg and Nick Frost's film, Paul. Playing FBI agent Zoyle, he was at his deadpan comedic best. Jason's character was so rigid and robotic, but he made him hysterical with brilliant one-liners and clever comedic timing. Working with Jennifer Aniston again, Jason thrived as a member of the all-star cast of Horrible Bosses. Bateman, Charlie Day and Jason Sudeikis made up the key trio in the movie and their great chemistry was obvious to director Seth Gordon. These guys all come from that same sort of lineage of, of being willing to play with the words on, on the day and on the page and that was really important. And, and we tried to find three guys that, you know, look like they could be friends with one another and that, you know, we, uh, once we found that Bateman was interested, we thought he was really the perfect middle guy, you know, because he can be the straight man amongst the guys and the straight man with his boss and be the guy we root for all the way through the film. And I think that that's, I think he did a wonderful job with that. And, and who do you surround him with or who do you put with him? You know, we had kind of an all-star team and we only realized once we heard them read the script together aloud for the first time how amazing their chemistry together was. Finishing up the year, Jason starred in The Change Up. Paired with Ryan Reynolds, they play friends who lead very different lives and magically switch bodies while urinating into a water fountain. Sounds a little far-fetched, right? But Jason has a different outlook to his films and believes not every film needs to be full of moral substance. Sometimes they just need to make us laugh. I don't know, I don't know if we've done a good job. We might lose our, our, our acting union cards after this film, but uh, all we did, we, we wanted to make sure that we played these characters in such a way that it was funny. And uh, we didn't want to do impersonations of one another because that would be a lot of acting and no one comes to these movies to see acting. They want to <laughs> laugh. Jason Bateman has one of Hollywood's best comeback stories. From his early sitcom years as a teenager to fading almost out of the spotlight before dominating the comedy genre today. With his dry, deadpan comic delivery, his quick wit and clever comic timing, he is a popular choice with casting directors. Well liked and respected in the industry, we can expect even bigger things to come from Mr Bateman. Stay tuned to Starfix for all of the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcasting glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. Find or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and mnc.tv.